I'm Dan, and welcome to Why You Should Play, a show where I break down the components of games I love and recommend some similar games. This week we're talking about Mark of the Ninja, so let's see why you should sink into the shadows and get your ninja on. When writing these videos, I actively try to avoid hyperbole. I'm trying to show off games that I really like, but that doesn't necessarily mean that a game is perfect or one of the best of all time. That being said, Mark of the Ninja is one of the best stealth games ever made, if not the best. There are certainly bigger games with more locations and mechanics, but there are none that are so tightly produced. I struggle to conjure any significant issues with the game, and its collection of mechanics and levels are so closely woven together. This is a small but exquisitely crafted package. Mark of the Ninja is an action stealth game released in September of 2012 and remastered in October of 2018. It was developed by Clay Entertainment, an indie game developer out of Vancouver that has consistently put out quality games, from the fantastic survival game Don't Starve to the frankly revolutionary game Invisible Ink. Mark of the Ninja puts you in control of a ninja in modern times. Your way of life is threatened by a large military organisation who are coming after your clan. To stop them, you must be marked with ancient tattoos that will give you special abilities. Unfortunately, these tattoos will eventually drive you insane. The narrative is simple for the most part, with a few nice twists and turns, but it does the job of carrying you through the masterfully designed levels, and it is elegantly presented. One of the most important factors in a stealth game is communicating information to your player. The player really needs to know more than they should, so that they can avoid being noticed. This is why stealth games are so rarely successful when they're first person, and often fall back on the crutch of having a bar somewhere on the screen that displays how noticeable you are. Mark of the Ninja takes this one step further and integrates this communication with the charming cartoon style. When you stand in shadow, your character takes on a darker tone. The surfaces that you can climb are always shown in white. It also visualizes sound with expanding circles. Not only does this communicate the effect of your sounds and who could possibly hear them, it also gives you information about the area around you. You see, despite the 2D environments, you can't see areas when your character doesn't have direct line of sight. So the sound circles give you information on where enemies are. All of this perfectly rides the line between giving the player too much information, making the game easy, and not giving the player enough information, making them walk into situations stupidly and unprepared. You always feel like a predator stalking some unsuspecting prey, but that prey always presents some danger. This allows the sleek stealth mechanics to shine through. This game nails the feeling of being a ninja through some clever foundational mechanics. To start, moving around any given level is swift, easy to control, and you are incredibly mobile, with the ability to scale most surfaces, sneak through vents, and hang on ceilings. Quick assassinations have a lot of weight as well. When you sneak up and attack someone, they don't just die, you are shown a simple button prompt that you have to hit quickly or else the killer isn't silent. Not only does this add challenge, it adds real impact to every time you assassinate someone. On top of this foundation are a lot of tools. From the very start, you'll have an unlimited supply of kunai that you can use to distract guards and destroy lights. Throughout the story, you'll unlock limited tools like smoke bombs, traps, and even special kunai that terrify enemies. The toolbox is forever growing, and it really feeds into the improvisational feeling of the stealth here. You can solve problems in a variety of different ways, and it's satisfying each time. The way you use the tools is clever as well, it slows down time for you to aim them, so you can get that awesome feeling of throwing three kunai at all the lights in a room, leaving it in complete darkness, like a movie ninja. Even the skill tree rarely provides you with direct upgrades, instead it gives you new tools to play with, like assassinating someone from a ceiling or while hidden in a vent. The game wants you to experiment and explore the mechanics, and it has little touches to help along with that, like generous checkpointing and super fast respawns. You always feel liberated to play in the spaces you are provided. Now, this wouldn't be half as impressive if you didn't have a great playground to utilise it all in.
The best kinds of stealth games are built like little puzzle boxes. A number of moving pieces that you have to understand and then exploit. Unfortunately, this can often result in critical paths. Now, a stealth game that has a critical path is frustrating. You can feel like you are wrestling with what the developer expects you to do more than the actual enemies and problems that you're presented with. So the goal is a puzzle box with lots of different solutions and the ability to improvise on the fly. That is what Mark of the Ninja is. The stealth mechanics provide you with a lot of options, while the masterful level design give you interesting problems to solve. Whenever you enter a scenario, there are such a variety of things to consider. For example, where are the enemies and what types are they? Because some of them require special tactics, like hitting them with two blows to kill them, or they have an ability to light up an area. You also need to consider where the room lights are, climbing surfaces, and vents. Later levels even incorporate lasers and special alarm systems. Finding your own path through these is profoundly satisfying, and like the mechanics, the levels are always introducing new kinds of problems for you to solve. Even if you find that these stages are a little too easy, there are special challenges like completing a stage without raising an alarm, or completing an objective without using any tools. There are even a few collectible scrolls and special puzzle solving secret stages. This creates a scalable difficulty for any type of player, and the challenges encourage you to explore the mechanics. This is a kind of level design that binds a game together and makes every other aspect sing. So, before I wrap this up, let's go through a few games that are similar to Mark of the Ninja. If you like these games, then you should probably give Mark of the Ninja a go, and vice versa. Let's start with another clay entertainment game. Invisible Inc. manages to turn a turn-based XCOM style system and create a compelling stealth game. The ever-present alarm and fantastically designed characters you play as make this a continuation of Clay's phenomenal stealth pedigree. Second, we have Metal Gear Solid V The Phantom Pain. The stealth mechanics of The Phantom Pain are designed to give you such a plethora of options that even after the 40 to 80 hours it takes to beat, you will still be approaching situations in new ways. Finally, we have Hitman 2016. Hitman is defined by silly kills and ridiculous panic moments, but at its core, each level gives you a stealth playground, and what you make of it is up to you. If you're interested, I have a full why you should play on my channel. Elegant presentation, sleek stealth mechanics, and masterful level design all tightly woven together. That is why you should play Mark of the Ninja, and I gave you some games to consider if you like the look of it. If you enjoyed this little game recommendation, don't forget to subscribe for a new video every Wednesday. And if you're feeling extra generous, give this video a like and leave a comment. It really does help me out. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week.